Let's talk about Gemini 2.5 Flash. Now, if you watched my last video, then you'll know about the holy square that I was talking about, which was model, AI dev, context, and thinking, right? Sequential thinking. These bottom two are two different MCPs. AI dev, I'm gonna be using Klein. Model, I'm gonna try and use Gemini 2.5 Flash. Now, the reason for this video the question that I'm trying to answer is, can you or we, can we make websites, applications for very cheap using Flash with MCPs? Right? That's the question I'm trying to answer in today's video. I'm not going to be showing you how to set up the MCPs or anything like that. And I'm going to be using the SOP that I always use to test applications, but with a slightly different twist to it. In this case, I'm going to be using Flash with some MCPs. So if you don't know, then this is the SOP that I use to benchmark AI devs, right? If you want to get this benchmark, then feel free to join my school. It'll be the first link in the description. Everything is laid out. All my prompts are laid out. Everything is, you know, really organized and stuff. It's not a video course, okay? Everything, all the videos and stuff are already on the channel for free, right? Instead, what it is, is everything I talk about, but written out in a more organized way. So let's create this app like I always do. So we'll call this Flash Thinking um, Rolls Royce. And then I'll just put two twos there just in case I already have something called that. Okay. And then the only other thing we need to do is open up another version of this and get the public images. I might just try and copy the whole public folder this time. Uh, let's see if this works. So what did we call it? We called it Flash Thinking Rolls Royce. So once this is done in just one second, we'll open up the workspace. So file, open folder, press F, look for Flash Thinking Rolls Royce. <laughs> I knew it. That's why I put a 2-2 there because I've already done this video, but without the thinking part of this. So we'll paste public. Let's just cancel that because augment code is very annoying and just opens up. I hate it when it does that. There we go. So now we have public slash images. That's actually a much faster way to do uh, the SOP. And then we'll head on over to Visual Studio Code. I'm just going to grab this prompt, which I used, which I used to make sure that it's using my MCPs properly, right? And then we'll paste the building prompt underneath. So basically all this says is sequential thinking MCP, right? So use this to do things step by step. Use context seven to find the latest documentation of anything you build. Um, and we'll just press enter here. Now, last time I did this with Gemini Flash, um, it, it completely failed, right? So what I want to know is, can we use... Okay, I need to add credits, apparently. <laughs> can we use a cheap model with MCPs to make these kinds of websites? Okay, so the reason for this is obviously cost, right? I can build one of these websites very quickly, very easily using... Gemini 2.5 Pro or Sonnet 3.7. However, the cost of that is too damn high. So I'll just say use placeholders. Okay, so it's already finished planning. I'm not sure about this at all now that it's already finished planning after just one single prompt from the plan. When Gemini 2.5 does this, it really goes into detail. However, I want this to be a completely fair test. And I just want to see if this can build something that is good enough to save us basically time. Now, what the hell was that? Okay. That was a big old list of commands. Oh, I need to say um, the, oh, okay, it worked it out for itself. Okay, so we're just gonna cancel this because it's not actually using sequential thinking. I'm gonna try something that I haven't really used before. I'm gonna put something in custom instructions here, right? So I'm just gonna get the prompt from before. Hopefully these are system instructions. That's what I'm hoping for anyway. So we'll put them here. You must use my MCPs to research context and to do step by step thinking. Okay, and then we'll copy this prompt again. Um, what we can actually do as well, which is a very good tip if you wanna test things, guys, is we can go back here and press restore, right? And then restore files. And now all of those files that it just created have been uh, deleted. Uh, okay, well, it didn't actually seem to delete them. So we can manually delete these ones here. 
Okay, so this time it is using the context seven, which is good. It's useful, but it's what I want. And I really, really needed to also, oh, good, look at that. I got internalization, internationalization and static website generation. That's actually perfect. This is exactly what I needed. Okay, now it's also doing step by step. Perfect. So adding things to custom instructions definitely seems to work. So the user wants to blah, blah, blah. Nice. Okay, good. Now, the really cool thing about this is the cost, right? This is so far cost uh, three pence, right? This would have already cost 50 cents, 60 cents, etc. cetera. Um, so this is super, super useful. Let's see if it's actually giving me useful information too. Um, I'm not sure where the actual details are here. Summarize the plan. Yes, please do. Okay, look, and then it said next thought needed false. And then it gave me the entire uh, plan, right? And it should now have all of that information if I put act on. So let's put, let's just say continue using sequential thinking when building, right? Just in case it decides not to. Then we'll switch to act. Remember, we're six pence in. I'm going to try and create this entire website for less than $5, right? Probably less than $1, but I don't want to make promises that I can't keep. So I'm going to try and make this website for less than $5. Data.ts is looking much more packed than it normally does, which is good. I like the way that it's going about this. The first step plan is to find the data structure for languages, services. So this is really, this is the really cool thing. Basically what it is, it's, it's like boomerang tasks, right? So instead of having one task, okay, um, what this does is it has, it breaks tasks into thoughts, right? So thought one, thought two, thought three, thought four, thought five, thought six, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, now, one thing that I would have liked to have done is say, don't use placeholder code. Um, I kind of forgot to say that. So let's just cancel this and just say, please don't use placeholder code. Try to make something complete using step-by-step -step thinking. So I think this is the way to do it, guys. Like if, if each step says don't use placeholder code, right, then it should code the entire task, right, in full instead of having placeholder code. Okay, so this is actually looking pretty interesting. Um, we've spent 20 cents so far. It's successfully doing things piece by piece. I'm really hoping that the final product is at least usable and is coded properly, including... Sorry guys, I lost my train of thought there with the old uh, fire alarm that you might have heard. But like, I'm just hoping that it's usable enough and everything works, right? So it's saying it's done. It's cost 30 cents. Let's have a look here. So npm run build and an npm start. So build will probably fail just because um, there's normally TypeScript errors and things. Let's see. Okay, so there are some issues here. Let's just try npm run dev or npm start, I guess. But let's see if we have anything usable. Okay, so we've got the... Um, Okay, so for Flash, this is good, right? This is much better than Flash without MCPs. Now, so what I normally do with this benchmark, sorry, I lost my train of thought again, the alarm went off again. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna press enter on this prompt, which is please make sure no pages are 404 ing for example, service page, etc. Make sure the website is production ready with a lot more styling, more modular blocks, more content on, content on each page. Also make sure there's a header and footer with a language switcher. Also continue using sequential thinking MCP in order to achieve this. Okay, so this is going to be kind of the last chance saloon, but to get what we got for 30 cents is a significant, oops, that's my thumbnail <laughs> rip, is a significant improvement on previous uh, attempts of me doing this with 2.5 flash. So we'll just let this build one more time. We'll see what happens. And then if this gives me something that's perfectly functioning, um, yeah, I mean, this, this is crazy that you can now build with 2.5 flash, which is just so damn cheap. Just a few things about this, guys, is number one, you will often get errors. Like, um, for example, this one just has loads of uh, errors for some reason. What you can actually do is you can hover over them normally 
and say quick fix and then like update it like that, that, that actually works. So again, quick fix, update. Again, quick fix, update. And you just keep doing this and that should solve a lot of the issues. Right, you will have to do this with worse models sometimes just because of the way that it works. These errors here are normally just due to the fact that it's, um, I need to reopen Visual Studio Code. There's not really an, actually an issue here. Um, but yeah, there's nothing wrong with fixing errors semi manually, right? And then what you can actually do is you can open it in cursor, for example, or a different IDE and see whether those errors are gone. So don't get too focused on each individual error. So I've just opened the same file, right? Location slug page.tsx, location slug page.tsx inside cursor and those errors are gone. So just be careful with that um, because you might get kind of stuck trying to fix something that's not actually broken. That happened to me yesterday. Okay, so just so you guys know, the kind of average cost of this, and I know this doesn't look amazing, etc. There's definitely some problems here. I understand that. But the average cost of this using Gemini 2.5 Pro or Sonic 3.7 is about 10 to $15 for one website, okay? I have spent $1.20 and I have something that is almost there already. Now, what I could do here is I could change to a more expensive model and say, finish this entire project off, right, for example. But I mean, for now, I know that the colors are not amazing, but like to be able to take, does that, do they change? What the hell? To be able to take, um, you know, just a prompt and being able to build an entire website for $1.30, right? It's actually really, really good for AI, okay? You try and do this with DeepSeek, it will fail. There'll be errors, etc. You try and do this with Flash without step-by-step -step thinking or without Context 7, you will get errors, okay? But it's like we can make stupid models or bad models more intelligent by using these two very, very simple MCPs. Overall, this is the first time that a model that is not 3.7 Sonnet or Gemini 2.5 Pro or uh, GPT 4.1, right? Or like 03 or whatever, like whatever the SOTA model of GPT is. This is the first time a non SOTA, SOTA means state of the art, right? So the best model from a company. This is the first time a non SOTA model has managed to actually create a fully functioning Next.js project, right? Which alone makes this video huge because, you know, you can, you can maybe do this with DeepSeek right now with completely for free. So, I mean, I'll probably test that next, to be honest with you. Like, can you now make a website completely for free? completely for free using context and um, thinking, right? Sequential thinking. That's now the question I want to know is, can we now start doing this for free? I'll just give this a little bit more time, um, probably up to $5. I said that the max I would go to is $5. So I'll just give this a little bit more time just to finish. Like it's doing the language switcher and things now, which is exactly what I wanted to see. I just want to see a little bit more of what it can do and then we'll end the video. But I would say that this was already a great success. Okay. Like for example, the, the it works perfectly. The EN works perfectly. This is, this was not previously possible with Gemini 2.5 flash without serious amounts of, you know, bug fixing and vibe coding and whatever. I have only sent two prompts to this entire system, right? And I've only spent $2, which means that we can do more of this. And also, you can set this up with Olama using DeepSeek, right? Now, I don't know about that. I've never had a good experience with DeepSeek, I must say. But what if it's now possible? What if it's now possible to build a website for free, right? Okay, so I'll leave the video here, guys. Look, we have a basic header. We have a basic footer. I think this should work if I change. It does. Does it maintain its language? It does. Again, I've never had a... Okay, that didn't work. Okay, right, that makes sense because I'm not on... Okay, that, that makes sense why it didn't work. Um, this is the first time a stupid in inverted commas model has managed this. I'm gonna test it for the mod models, guys. I think this is basically a huge upgrade to vibe coding and I'm gonna keep making videos about it because it is the most insane thing in, a right, in AI right now. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you're watching on always the end of the video, you're an absolute legend. I'll see you very, very soon with some more content. Peace out.